Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindshare Podcast. This show is sponsored by Kits Keep In Touch Systems, a two-time international award-winning marketing suite for sales professionals. REM, Real Estate Magazine, Canada's premier monthly magazine for real estate professionals. And the ORCF, the Ontario Realtors Care Foundation, enabling and empowering realtors across Ontario to fundraise in support of shelter-related causes in the communities in which they live and work. You can learn more about all of our sponsors by visiting my site, mindshare101.com. And while you're there, Be sure to check out the details of our upcoming Mindshare Mastermind happening in Toronto, September 16th to the 18th. I got to tell you, we've got a speaker lineup, which is absolutely loaded. This is not your run-of-the-mill, typical real estate conference, the same old lineup you see everywhere. We're going deep on this one. We're going to be bringing you voices that are going to motivate you. They're going to inspire you. They're going to help provoke that creative spark to elevate you to your next level of success. And over the course of two and a half days, We're going to load you up with actionable value, leaving you wanting more. The discussion, the problem solving, the collaboration, it's going to be powerful. You've been hearing me talk about it. You might have already reserved your spot for it, or maybe you've been considering it. Spots are limited. Don't wait. Book your ticket and tell tell your closest colleague to book theirs too. Check out the website for details, mindshare101.com. Like I said, this mass fund is going to be powerful. It's going to be one of those you will thank yourself later moments that you want in life. Today's episode is number 293. He manages hundreds of agents and oversees hundreds of million dollars in real estate volume. His innovative approach to a constantly evolving market makes him a trusted choice for a diverse array of clientele with a variety of real estate needs. He says, earning the trust of my clients is the most important aspect of my work. The clearest sign that I'm doing a good job is the loyalty and referrals I receive from my clients. He's got a deep passion for all aspects of real estate. Having successfully built and flipped numerous properties, he possesses a thorough understanding of home construction, renovation, and design. And he has been consistently ranked among the top 1% of realtors. Joining me on this episode of the Mindshare Podcast is broker and managing partner at Forest Hill Legacy, Lahav Resnick. Lahav, welcome to the Mindshare Podcast. Buddy, thank you. This is this is awesome. Look, I'm I'm blushing. I'm all red. Like that intro was uh pretty crazy. I love it. I love it. Buddy, you man, you know what, man? I've been I've been uh I don't even know how many years it's been now. Um, yeah. but been watching you take over uh ever since you started. You guys have been I mean, you and the crew, uh, you know, Mikey and Stevie as well, my boys over there. Yeah. Uh, you guys have been just kicking ass over there, man. It is uh it is such an amazing thing to see and I know uh you and I for some reason just pass each other on the street or at at you know different stores every once in a blue moon and start catching up and next thing you know the wives are like okay we got to go and we're sitting there just talking. Um buddy I'm excited to have you on the show today man. Uh, it's awesome it's awesome it's been uh it's been a fun ride so far and uh you know every different market we hit it's it's a, it's a new ride each time so I, I'm loving it we're growing. I got some amazing partners as you mentioned Mikey and Steve and I've got uh, Barack and Kathy, and I mean a lot of a lot of uh, Freddies there. We had a lot of people involved in our world, and it's just it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm 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 blessed and I'm grateful and. And and I thank you again for uh, having me here. I'm excited for this, buddy. Oh man, I, I appreciate you making the time today. I'm I, I'm excited to dig in. And in fact, you, you know, you just mentioned about the different markets. Yeah. Um. And we know sitting here today, it is it is currently as we record. And so those of you listening to this on, you know, iTunes or any of your favorite podcast platforms, uh, as most of you know, we do record live. Uh, and we always record sort of the Wednesday prior to uh, when the episode gets released. So it is Wednesday, July the twenty fourth, and we know that the Bank of Canada just made another rate announcement today, which everybody was, was really anticipating, you know, what's going to happen. And I guess I'd ask you, you know, as we talk about markets and it just being news of the day, what do we feel today's rate announcement is, you know, what kind of impact is going to have on the overall market over these, man, I'd say like, you know, 60 days, 60 ish days. Cause we know we've got another one coming up in September. I like, dude. Honestly, in, in fairness, nobody nobody knows anything. I, you know, fair. Yeah. We we used to we used to be great at predicting markets. We really were. It was it was you know initially it was a uh, you know spring market would be hot, summer would slow down, fall would heat up again, and then you know winter would slow down. It would re- repeat, and it was very easy, and we were able to predict it. And then markets went crazy. You know, uh, after 0809's crash in the states, 
Uh, there was a, a new market here. It started heating up. And then 2017, when it crashed, we knew what was going to happen. We had trends to follow. And then this last adjustment or crash or whatever you want to call it, it's been a really, this is the best way to describe it. It's been a weird market, you know, and you can ask people across the board. That's generally the word that they're using. So where do I see it going? We, we have no clue. All we need is a little bit of buyer confidence. We need the media to jump in and say, hey, everything's looking great. You know, go out and buy. Now's the time. And then suddenly there's going to be a, a rampage. You know, it's just you said a weird market. I was going to ask you, you know, what kind of market do you think we're in? And I've, I've had some people, you know, it's a good market. It's a bad market. Uh, some there's, people there's, said, you know, yeah, there's it's no a professional bad market. market. There's no such thing as a bad market. Every, every okay. market is a good market. Every market has its opportunities. Every market has, you know, there, there's like right now for buyers, it's it's ideal. You want to buy a condo in Toronto? You've got the pickings. You can negotiate it. You can put conditions in. Like it's, it's a great opportunity. There's no such thing as a bad market. It's just where it's sitting right now. I, we we don't. It's not balanced. I think it's really in the favor of the buyer at this point. Uh, lots of inventory to choose from. They can be picky. They could take their time. Once again, they can put conditions in. They can have an inspection done. See what they're really buying. Uh, I mean, there were there were times when we were in a deep seller's market that people were buying stuff sight unseen. You know, it, yeah. it literally yeah. happened. They, they, there would be a video walkthrough and then they'd be submitting offers and buying condos in downtown Toronto. So uh, I, I think we're in the favor of the buyer. That being said, you know, based on trends within the office, number of showings, number of calls coming in, inquiries, deals happening, negotiations going on, it's turning a little bit very slowly to something a little more balanced. That's, that's sort of what we're seeing. Yeah. So, so, so with the rates thing, because we know that from a, a seller's perspective, it's one thing. From a buyer's perspective, a lot of people have been really sitting on the sidelines, uh, waiting things out to see what's going to happen. And I know that that's a conversation we're having with a lot of our coaching clients, where listings are coming. They're, they're, I mean, are they coming at the pace they were coming at? They're not, but they're coming. We're still seeing yeah. a lot of action. People want to get their properties on the market. Many of those people probably thinking their prices are still what they were. But when it comes to the buyers, we're seeing a lot of folks who were, well, I'm just going to wait. I want to see what's happening. And you just mentioned about uh, specifically the condo market in Toronto and saying, hey, there's opportunity. And I, 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 would, I would agree with you one a million percent. There's always opportunity. And we know that that cliche line of like what goes up must come down. Well, right. hey, if it goes down, you know it's going to go up. Right. So what would you say to buyers who are on the fence right now? wanting to, you know, wait out whatever might happen with the rates, let's say even in September. And, and and maybe I'll couple that same question and kind of bring it together and say, not just what would you say to the buyer, but how are we advising our agents? Because I know you manage, you know, hundreds of agents. What would you say to them if they're like, oh man, my, my, my buyers, they just want to wait. Look, the thing to consider is this, and we we'll normally get the question similar to this. We'll get the question, should, you know, should we list in the fall? Should we list in the winter? Should we wait a year? It's going to, we can only talk about the market that we know. So here's something to consider. The rates are where they are. You know, they're dropping nominally. So, you know, quarter point here and there, it, it does have a slight impact on affordability. There's no question. But consider this. What if the market starts heating up pretty quickly and you want to wait for the rate to come down so that you can turn around and save yourself over the term of the entire mortgage $20,000 or $30,000? That's that's what you might want to end up saving by waiting for that half a point difference. Let's just talk hypothetically. Mm -hmm. The time it's going to take you to get to that point, that condo market or the house market, it might those units might go up by thirty, forty thousand dollars just based on suddenly a lack of supply, suddenly a little bit more demand. You know, this is this is basic economics, right? Lots of inventory now. That's great. If some of it starts dropping off or people start buying. And there's pricing is going to start going up. And especially if it's building specific, if you're looking for one or two or three or four buildings, which a lot of people do do that, they focus on a specific pocket. If the inventory is limited in that area, where in other parts of the GTA, there might be tons of condos. If it's limited and you're waiting for that rate to drop a little bit more and you're saying, OK, maybe I'm going to wait till September, October, that price of the condo might go up 20, 30 K, which which will be more than what you'd be saving by not buying now. So I, I always talk to the market now. This is what we're dealing with. This is what your monthly rates are. This is, you know, can you afford it? If you can afford it, if it's an investment, what will it rent for? Like, get into it now, right? But That's I'm not in a rush. I, maybe I'm going to wait till like, you know, September or something. 
Absolutely. Come September, what might actually happen is that same condo that you could buy today for six fifty might be six seventy five. We can't predict, just yep. like we can't predict what the interest rate is going to be in September, right? So, look the the idea the idea is deal with the situation and the moment that you have in time. These that's the advice we give to our agents to then share with their buyers. If the buyers are real, they understand this. It's 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 a basic concept. It is legit. You could do the math. Talk to any mortgage broker; they'll tell you the same thing. Listen, I, I love the spin on it about, you know, how much money you're really looking to save here. You know, that's a similar thing I do again as we're talking through, again, with coach clients going through, you know, somebody's getting beat up on commission or whatever. What are you looking to save here? For the 5, 10, 15, 20K you're trying to beat up on commission, it could cost more when it comes to the what we might leverage to market the property and the value we might be able to deliver based on the marketing and what we might be able to get as a sale price. You know, what are, we, what are we truly trying to save here? So I, I like the spin on that. And I think that, again, for everybody too, didn't really pay attention to that one, right? As people are giving you that, we're talking quarter points here, like a half a point. Money's money. I don't want to downplay that. Yeah. There are realities, though, that do come back to say, well, what are you truly saving if you wait? And as you just mentioned, we know that as the rates do come down, there will be more uh, confidence and therefore prices will start to stabilize a little bit more in terms of, you know, Maybe not come down, maybe not get under asking, but get what asking was, right? Like we're going to see that. We're going to see them climb. Yeah. Well, look, one one thing we're leaving out of the equation is, you know, are the sellers realistic in these situations? So Okay. And I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Look, in the condo market, sellers have become realistic. When you're one of six units that are one plus ones in the same building that are for sale and none of them are moving and one of these six or two of these six they have to sell for whatever right. reason it might be. They're getting divorced. They're moving out of the city. They 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 they, they bought a bigger home. Whatever it might be, then that that forces pricing down a little bit, and then that establishes a new precedent, right? So, right, these sellers have become more realistic when it comes to at least on the condo market, housing market. It's it's a it's a fifty fifty because you know half half of the agents out there may not have the skill necessarily to get their clients realistic when it comes to an actual sale price. So they're they're taking the advice from the clients instead of the reverse and they're listing high to start. And sometimes it's taking, you know, months for them to get realistic. So, you know, that's, that's why a lot of people are like, there's tons of inventory. Why is it sitting? Well, most of it's because most of the sellers on the housing side are not as realistic as they should be. So, so what do you do with a seller like that? Because we're seeing that a lot, right? Sellers come and basically saying, I want this for my house. This is what I want to list at. And you look and say, well, you, you're not going to get that. It's just, it's, it's not the right price. It's just going to sit. Look, How do you handle a seller who, who does feel that their house should be, you know, listed for more than the comps are, are saying it should be? Right. So first of all, we're dealing with personalities. We're dealing with approaches. We're dealing with yep. different people. Sometimes you're dealing with, you know, a husband, a wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, brothers, sisters, family involved. Like you're diff different people, different scenarios. So each case is going to be its own unique case. But consider this, you know, as long as I've established what I feel it's worth based on what we see happening in the marketplace, the same thing I'm looking at. So the same sales and the same cops I'm using, the buyer is going to do the same thing when they come in to see this home. So they're going to use that to establish the property. Yes, it's an amazing home. It has the most incredible kitchen that's fully renovated. The backyard is to die for its ravine, all of these aspects, mm -hmm. but the buyer is still going to base it on the sale. So I'm sharing with them what I feel the actual property is worth, whether it's, I'm giving them a range, whether I'm giving a price, whatever it might be. If the seller needs to, which does happen, see for themselves the reality of our market, we will put it on for a short time at a slightly higher price with the covenant that if we don't see the reaction that we're getting in the first 10 to 12 days, we're not getting offers, we're not getting showings, feedback's negative, whatever it might be, then we're adjusting right away. We're not waiting right. a month into this, right? You know, if we're getting tons of showings and the feel and, and is positive and so forth and so on, great. We'll keep it as is because I don't care what agent it is in what market. You can never define in the situation we're in right now in the market we're in right now. You can't define the true demand that's happening. You can't. One property can have multiple offers, even in our market where we have it from time to time. It could have multiple offers. You put the same townhouse, you know, two streets down up on the market. It's got a little bit different floor plan. And then suddenly there's no buyers for that one. So, you know, we're in a situation where you've got to tell the sellers it is, this is it. This is what it is. This is how we're basing it on. This is what the buyers are going to do. Uh, and I, and I sometimes, you know, we train our agents on kind of flipping it. We'd say to the seller, well, look, what are you guys doing after this? You're buying, right? 
So once we sell, you're going to go and buy. We're going to go and we're going to look at some homes. You're going to fall in love with this house. It's going to be your 15th house, 20th house, whatever it is. You're going to fall in love. And you're going to be like, I love this house. I want it. Let's put an offer. What's it worth? And what am I going to do? I'm going to come to you with the comparables and I'm going to show you. Are you going to pay an extra 200000 just because the seller is asking for it? Or are you going to pay what it's worth based on the sales? Smart, man. You're Smart. Gonna, like, so, so would you take the overpriced listing right now? I, you know, I, I will if it's reasonably overpriced. If it's crazy, I walk away. I walk away. This is everybody's different. Every age is different. Every approach is different. Yeah. Um, you know, reputation is is big. And and when it, if it's too much and it's too crazy, I will just I will walk away. And I likely end up getting the call after. And again, we train our agents on this. We see it happening. Where one of my agents will come in and they'll be like, "Look, I you know I closed the book. I said this is not for me. You want to price it that close." They went with somebody else and then two months later the listing expired and they came back to the agent and they priced it right and then sold it so that's that's what we're trying to do is just getting people to understand all right deal with the situation based on it is sometimes i will sometimes i won't you know so two 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 good things that, i mean there's a lot of good being shared two things that, that that really stuck out to me though based on uh you know the listing price one was what you said about the comps, you're showing them comps. They're like, yeah, but I want more. Okay. Now let's look at the purchase of another home. Would you pay more? Bang paradigm shift, like just revelation, right? They're going to sit there and go, no. Say, so, so why would somebody pay more here? And it's, it's logical, <clears throat> right? But you got to remember in the moment, first of all, every seller thinks their house is worth more than it really is. Oh, but, for sure they but, do, but much the same too. If they, if they overprice, it's going to sit too long. Then when they do find the house that they want, one about the logic around that, that purchase price or what that price should be, but two around, well, if you didn't sell, you may not be able to buy that house that you want because you're still sitting on the market. It gets even better than that. You price it high, it sits too long. What ends up happening is, and I could show you time and time again, it ends yep. up selling for less than it would if you right. priced it right to begin with. Sure. Right? Price Buddy, this is, this is like price. when we used to sell our used cars back when we were kids. You'd put it up on, you know, like Auto Trader or Kijiji. Somebody would you, offer you, you something. You'd be like, nah, forget it. You'd sit there for three weeks meeting 17 other people and end up selling it for less than the 18th guy because you're like, I'm done. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't even. Like, it's – look, it, emotion comes into it. This isn't a straight math equation yeah. for people. It's emotion, and I understand, and we – you know, we've, we've got to take that into consideration when we're dealing with situations. And again, sometimes I will I will try to put my foot down and it works and we sell and they're happy and ecstatic. And sometimes they just got to see it for themselves. So, fair, fair. you know, it's, it's just it's part it's part of the process. It really, really is. The key is just making sure that you're using the right comps and that you're pricing a property to begin with. Sure. So, yeah. so, so as we talk about, you know, uh, people sit on the sidelines as buyers, we talk about sellers who, you know, are wanting more money. We look at the overall economics going on in our, in, in our world these days. What, what would you say is, is sort of one of the, the main key challenges that you're really hearing from, from agents right now? Cause I know you talk to a ton of agents. There's yeah, there, there's a couple of them. The, the main one is, is holding the listings. So we have a lot of active agents, top producing agents that, you know, are mainly listing agents and they go out and they hustle. And, you know, there was a saying back in the day, you list to live, um, you know, the keys get the listing that's normally followed up by a buy. So it's generally two transactions. These agents that that have these listings, they haven't had to truly manage their clients expectations the way that they need to now. And that's and that's key because what's happening is these things aren't selling. Right. And now these agents are like, what do I do? Like, how nitty gritty do I take this? What do I need to look into? What do I need to change? What can I do differently? How can I market it differently? How can I how can I get this out there in front of as many people possible that so what, actually work? What are you telling them? Look, reality is, is we, the days of throwing a sign on the lawn and putting it on on MLS on our MLS system. Uh, those days are gone. They've been gone for a while already. And the, the truth is that a house needs to be sold if if. If it means that you need to be at every single showing to be able to sell the value of the home in order to point out the things that the other agent is not pointing out, then do that. Hmm. Then if that's going to make the difference, then do that. And I'm telling you, in many cases, it will. In many yep. cases, those those little things, hey, you know what? The uh, You could put all this information into a listing. I assure you, half the time, the agents aren't even reading listings when they're showing your property. So if you could be there to sell the value of it, that's going to make one difference. Um, obviously from a marketing perspective, you're, you're, you're a marketing guru, right? Marketing God in, in many, many ways. And, and reality is, is it needs to get in front of as many people as possible and not just once, just continually repeating it. The repetition 
is key. You know, I'll give you another little bit that not a lot of people look at, a little secret. Yeah, and yeah. It sounds, it sounds silly, but I'm going to tell you it makes a difference. Okay, go for it. Forget about using professional photography. That's a given. We hope that's a given in, in our world. Mm -hmm. You know, the photography, the, the, you know, the, the drone work, the video content, all that. Simple things like choosing the right photos to go on MLS. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that half the time agents aren't even looking at the photos that are being put up. A lot of times the photography companies are doing it for them on their behalf. Sometimes people's assistants are doing it. They're not really taking a close look. Some of these photos, remember, you got 15 seconds. It's like Tinder, for which sure. I don't know about, so I'm swiping the wrong I, way. I got to say, say I, I mean, I've heard of it. You know, I've I, never been there. I, I, I use it as an example. I use it because yep. people can relate whether they're on it or not. It's like, do I like him? Do I like mm -hmm. him? Do I like him? Yes, no, yes, no. You get that split second with the, the wrong photo, with the stairs showing the wrong thing, with the kitchen, which is not not a small kitchen, but you've got a photo that shows it as a galley. Like you got a straight on shot. I'm trying to get the camera straight here. There. Yeah, no, no, it's a great point. Though. Straight on shot. Like these types of things will make a difference between somebody skipping over your property or saying to their agent or booking directly, like, let's go see it. Right. That's going to make a difference. And in our market right now, we cannot lose those buyers because, yes, it only takes one. But if you're only getting one and they don't want it. You're not selling the house. It's it's a great point. I think everybody really needs to pay pay attention to that, right? It's like as you're watching, you're looking at those photos. Like when I see, I mean, when I see the one where they've maybe touched up the sky and the pot lights kind of have that little bit of glow to them, the sky has that little bit of a hue to it. Not for anything, it's going to stop you dead in your tracks for just a quicker moment. You're going to look at it just a little bit longer, right? I, um, yeah. Yeah. versus the one like you say you say I, I just as you said it i pictured a staircase kind of that round staircase i pictured you know a little bit of broad on and just dark and yeah. and just two completely different visuals the one with the staircase might actually be a nicer home but the way it was portrayed was very different therefore it's going to attract different people or not attract anybody whatsoever yeah and that's and that's where you really got to pay attention to the detail like like is this going to deter somebody like some, right. some of these useless useless hallway photos you know, like there's there's no point throwing 6,000 pictures onto MLS because the, the first four or five is what's going to get them through, basically. Right. right? But love, it, love the bigger point to this is be present. Yeah. So that you can actually define the value at, at, at whatever opportunity you have to do so, be there. Yeah. This, look, and that's this something that that was an old school tactic from back in the day, like way back in the day. Yeah. That it, you know, started to change as people had, we all had access to technology and online and everything else. And now we are seeing where a lot of the industry and a lot of the things going on in this industry are coming back to you, what it's always been as a people business. Yeah. Look, our our training sessions, we've got agents coming into our office. All right. Yep. We're not Zooming them. We want them face to face for the same reason that we're encouraging our agents to be face to face with the seller, face to face when you're dealing with offers, you know, DocuSign, AuthentiSign, all this digital signing software. It's great. It's helpful. It's useful. You're on vacation. You've got to do it. I understand. Yep. But when being face to face, I guarantee you, it can make a difference with a deal happening or not. And especially if you're able to present on the buying side, which still does happen. If you encourage it enough, if you encourage it enough, you push enough, you're on the buying side, you're representing the buyer, you want to come in and present in person to the seller. I'm telling you, the things you're going to learn sitting across from that seller can make the difference of saving your client 15, 20, 30 K or whatever percentage it is. It, it it's be significant. So, you know, that's, I, I, I love that old school approach. Let's mix the old school with the new school. That's well, that, but, but there's the beauty of what we all have the opportunity to do right now is literally exactly that mix the old with the new. What would you say then? Okay. What would you say is the biggest misconception that agents have right now for what it truly takes to succeed when, you know, as a realtor? Would it be the fact that they think it's all technology driven? No. You know, I think a lot have become realistic. It used to be, you know, some of the brokers out there that were 100% technology heavy. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'll mm -hmm. use the brokerage as an example. I'll come back to the agent component. But, you know, a lot of the brokerages that were 100% technology, you know, and focused and there was nothing else there. There was no other form of value whatsoever. Agents would jump to that thinking that, you know, especially millennials. And then we get into the younger agents coming into the marketplace they would jump into that thinking that that's where the market was heading. Reality is it's a combination of everything. You need to have the technology. There's no question, right? Same with an agent. You know, you got to be on social. No question about it. You got to be on multiple platforms. You got to be creative. 
now you got to you know it's got to be video content like it's not just about you know static posts that's not going to get people's attention right you've got to have a youtube channel maybe you've got to do a podcast like all of these things these are the things but that along with everything else that you did to get you where you were or if it wasn't you everything else that older agents did to get to where they were right people people buy because they like you right it's hard to like you when cliche it's but it's phone. so true right right like look you you and i share a lot of a lot of the similar philosophies we've we've spoken a lot you know we talk about touch points we talk about reminders we talk about being top of mind like these are all things that we both train on but what agents seem to forget is that in order for you to make the money there there is there is a there is a secret there is a you know i had a training session not long ago uh where literally the, i think the title was um secret to success in real estate and we probably had you know one of the biggest turnouts uh, that we had this was a little while ago and uh we normally do powerpoints it's a full written presentation uh, presentation it's not nothing's canned we get there and i open up the slide and the first slide it says the secret to success right the secret mm -hmm. to becoming a top producing agent and our our training sessions are normally you know an hour hour and a half i flip to the second side second slide and it says you need to fucking work <laughs> I put down. I put down the remote. I put down the remote. I Wait a second. Out. You all see why this is my boy I, right here, right? I walked out of the room, and they thought I was coming back. I got in my car and I left. <laughs> People sat there apparently for about forty-five minutes, thinking I was coming back. There is no secret. This is the misconception. Nothing cool. will get handed to you. There's no <laughs> such thing as leads. There's no like. There's no such thing as free biz. Like if, if leads were real, if offices were giving out leads, I would stop running three brokerages and I would go work for them. It doesn't happen. You need to generate your own business. You need to have a proper database. You need to have a system in place. You need to work the system. You need to be on people's minds. You need to be selling all the time. That's the reality. You want to make money? That's how you make it. I, I Dude, I, I absolutely love it. That That is... <laughs> Gold, man. So, so okay, I want to step up my game, and, and I want to get deeper into this marketing conversation with you now, okay? Sure. And sort of transition that way, because um, there are some specifics, and you just labeled off a whole bunch of great stuff, kind of high level. I want to dive deeper into that and, and, and kind of open that part of it up or this part of it up with, you know, if I want to step up my game and I want to do more deals right now, because a lot of people are talking about how they're just not busy enough. And I'm like, well, are you being productive enough? Are you doing the actions that you need to be doing in order to get the actual results that you want to have? The result is having the deal. The action are the things you need to do to get that deal. So, you know, as we as we as we talk about that, what do I need to do on a daily basis to have consistent success? And 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 maybe I'd even say it like, you know, what are the non-negotiables that you do in your day? Yeah. That really bring the consistency of the success to you. Look, so Here's the thing, you know, you're, you'll, you'll ask this question to, to 15 other broker owners or top yep. producing agents or yep. whatever it might be, and they're going to rhyme off, you know, they're going to rhyme off the, the door knocking and the cold calling and the networking and the community events. They're going to they're gonna talk about all these things that you have to do. My issue is, is most of the people that are coming in, either starting out new or they're, they're in a slump, okay, they're at the bottom of their sales cycle, they were really, really busy. Now they're at the bottom of the sales cycle. They, they ask me the same question. I, I, I always have to come back to the foundation. And this mm -hmm. is generally what's missing. So, you know, without that tight database filled in completely, without a, you know, a heart to go back to that's going to pump out all this activity and all these actions good for you to create, without that, you can do the door knocking and the cold calling and all of that. It's, but it's, it's, it's going to go nowhere. You're going to, yep. you're going to finally, after a thousand or 2000 homes, you're going to finally get that one lead and you've been out in there in winter and the snow and you're, you're cold and you're miserable and you hate door knocking, but you finally get that one lead, but you got nowhere to, to work this one lead. Cause that lead's going to be six months to a year out. Right. So having that database, having the system in place, and then you got to tackle the database. So right. the action steps are get on the phone whether you're texting them, whether you're using Messenger, whether you're DMing them, whatever it might be, get on the phone, contact your database, stay in touch with them. That That's going to be number one and one of the largest things. I know many top producing agents that make a lot of money just off of their database and just off of staying in contact with them. That's it. They don't door knock. 
They don't send out postcards. I'm not. I'm not encouraging that. I love. I love yep. the idea of everything. I love the I like idea that. of random touch points. But you know, a few agents that are specific. They're really, really good at reaching out, creating you know some sort of engagement. Then they're setting up a coffee meeting. They're going and they're meeting with these people, and it's turning into business in one form or another. Whether they are selling, whether they're asking for the referral, and then the referral's coming two months later. You do this enough. And then you add in all these other things that need to get done. You're going to be busy. And then what happens is your sales cycle isn't a big drop. Your sales cycle is, you know, your peaks and valleys are very, very close together. So you never feel that that feeling of what do I do now? I, you know, listen, great point. So how much time are you spending working your CRM every single day? Uh, three times a week, two hours a day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, normally 8.30 till about 9.30, 10.30, depending how busy it gets. Um, I'm constantly, whether it's whether it's actually reaching out, texting, calling, again, through social. All right. So I'll do that. But then on top of that, I will take an hour a day that I block off because the scheduling is key. Like, Beautiful. you know, our, 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 uh, our uh, business planning uh, this year for 2024, which we did in December for our agents, one of the key was blocking off your calendar, right? Because mm -hmm. that, that's a big deal, right? People know they got to go to the gym from six o'clock. Their body tells them they wake up. It's easy to do. If you're not scheduling other things in there, other things are going to take precedent and you're not going to do what you're supposed to do. So an extra hour a day, I'm on social and I'm engaging. Forget about okay, the so, so, so I, I got to ask you this one then. Yeah. What is your take on the idea of time management, you know, in real estate? Would you say it's an excuse to say it can't be done or, or you know, it sounds like you, much like me, schedule your days. Um, or, I mean, what, do you just get up and go? No, I no. Like I said, so See? Th the system, my scheduling, it's it's been embedded at this point. Right. So although although it's funny in my in my phone, it will still say it will still say contact database. Yep. You know, it's still blocked off. I'm not going to it. I know that every morning I've got that. If somebody calls me to book something for that time frame, I'm pushing it outside that time frame. Right. Unless unless it's a unique scenario, whatever it might be. Ten o'clock today, I had a second showing at one of my big listings. I was going to be there. So I wasn't making my calls. That That's an exception. But but I will make the calls later today. So I'll push it. Right. So, so, you know, I am structured and scheduled. Is it an excuse to not be that way? There are people who built this way. My, my eldest daughter, God bless her. She micromanages my wife and I on a daily basis. Yeah. She's 20 years old. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Uh, some people are built this way. Some people can be taught. Absolutely. And then there's some people that, that can never be taught it. They'll make their 60 to 80 to 100K a year. They'll wait for the phone to ring. Um, you know, they'll, they'll do okay. And, and for them, that, that's they're happy and that's all that matters. The ones that really, really want to learn will teach themselves it. So, so I, I for me, a lot but, of things. But, 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 but imperative, you would say. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Huge. See, I, we Beyond. get that excuse a lot from people, right? Is that it's it's real estate, so you got to just jump. You got to run when they call. And and from what I just heard from you, and and I'm again very much the same. I'm structured doing something right now, just because an opportunity just presented itself. Unless it's like, again, the house is burning down, kind of thing. We're gonna stick to what we're doing. We're gonna say no, like not right now. I'm gonna get to that there, and then just plug it into where it goes in the schedule. So that you can compartmentalize what it is that you have been accomplishing, how far you've been going, um, what what results are really coming from it. You know, it, it's got to be done. Otherwise, you are going to drop the ball. You're not going to necessarily make those calls that you're supposed to be making. And then at some point, you're going to get to that bottom of that sales cycle and go, well, why haven't I achieved? Well, have you been doing the actions? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, have you been scheduling them? Well, not really. It's been busy. I've got this one client that's really bothering me. One client? Yeah. Don't you want yeah. more clients? <laughs> it I love how, you know, especially with producing agents, because they will feel it the most. I yeah. love how they've got these really crazy sales cycles where they've got really high peaks, you know, in, in a two month period, they're going to do, you know, 150 or 200,000 GCI, like completely busy, like crazy. And then for another two months, they're doing absolutely nothing. And the reason why is they forgot to keep doing what they did to get them to the point of That's being right. crazy busy. All of the, you know, the foundation, the system, making the calls, uh, knocking on the doors, whatever it might be. They, they, they were too busy to keep doing that. 
and that took them away from from you know being able to have a not as bad a cycle. That's the that's that's yeah. the issue. Listen, it's not a bad problem to have, right? You, you, two two months on, two months off, two months on, two months off. But I tell you, they they'd be they'd feel a lot better. They'd be a lot healthier. Uh, I'd feel a lot better because they wouldn't be coming in almost crying every time with me. But um, you know, they just got to be consistent. That's that's like one of the big key words is the consistency is is important. Look, you know, you, you mentioned the word uh, foundation before. And I mean, this is like in our coaching program, this is one of the things we work on often with our coaching clients. Even the yeah. groups that we train is very much about creating that foundation, creating that system and that process so that you know exactly what you need to be doing, when it's supposed to be done. Then you've got a way to actually look back and say, hey, I did it. Recognize the accomplishment. Recognize that, again, the action was completed. And therefore, you will have the consistent results. And it's, it's all about building out those proper habits to do so. You know, um, now today we're talking very much about how to create your legacy in real estate. And, and this is a very much a continuation of, the, of the, ex the exact same teachings. I mean, things that you're telling your agents, um, things that I'm sharing with my coaching clients, things that we're talking about today. It's very much around that, right? How do we, how do we grow? How do we build more success? How do we build more consistency in the business? Now, we've, we've brought up phone calls. We've brought up um, social. If you could only do one of them, make phone calls or post on social media, which one would you choose and why? See, so I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose, bro. Like again, this, ah, this, okay. like, look, all, right. this, this turns, all it, all it does is turn into an excuse. Okay, you, we talked about excuses, right? Yep. There's, there's no, there's no reason why you can't do it all. There is I, no I, reason, dude, I, and you're, you're, I mean, you know me, I, I agree with you completely on that. Look, let's let's just talk. Real, like we we understand people are busy, life's busy, they've got kids, they got you know people can manage time a little bit better than others. I understand all of it. I really, really do. You find a way to prioritize certain things, and you know what? You don't make twenty calls, you don't make thirty calls in the day. You make five. Mm -hmm. Make a few calls. Yep. Check them off that your list. All right. You 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 don't have time to do fifty videos in a week. Do three or four. At least get into a pattern. Get into a system. And then you're going to find as time goes on, it's going to it's going to be easier and quicker. People aren't making the calls because they're afraid to. People aren't being because they, they don't know what to say. What, what, what would it's, you be saying to somebody and not sound so salesy? Look, if, if if I'm reaching out to people, I'm just I'm just reaching out to to check in on them, and and yep. it's it's a genuine thing. Even when it comes to even when it comes to social, if I'm engaging with somebody, I post somebody, somebody comments on it, I'm I'm engaging just to be me, right? And and. The, I, I'm genuine in my approach. I'm just like, hey, man, just check it in, see what's going on. Everything good. It's been a while since we've spoken. You know, they'll look, hey, everything's great. I saw you. I saw you've got this podcast. I saw you sold this one. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, enough about me. Tell me a little bit more. more. How are the kids? Uh, are they in camp? Great. Like, but it's genuine because you know what? I'm, I'm rarely bringing up real estate because the concept is I actually give a shit, number mm -hmm. one. And most people do, but most people are too afraid. They don't want to be salesman. -y. They don't want to be like, Hey, uh, do you, you know, uh, do you want to list your house? Yep. Uh, do, do, do you want to buy an investment property? Like there's no need for that. If you're top of mind and part of it being is this interaction along with everything. If you're top of mind, when they are ready for that, they will reach out to you. They'll at least give you an opportunity. You may not be the go-to, but they'll at least give you an opportunity. And then if you screw up the opportunity, that's a whole other training session. Well, here we, we, okay. So off the top, where is it? Uh, he says, earning the trust of my clients is the most important aspect of my work. The clearest sign that I'm doing a good job is the loyalty and referrals I receive from my clients. Would you say that, I mean, I guess expanding on that from a establishing trust factor, would your mechanism to be doing that be connecting with people through the phone calls, through the social, and just making good conversation about what's so, going on in their world versus sales? You you know this. Yeah. Okay. Any sales up, sales 101. We're in Mindshare 101. So let's yes, talk sir. sales 101 for one second. You get in front of somebody who doesn't know you at all. Let's just, that's the hardest one. Because your, your friends, your relatives, your circle, it's a little easier. But you get in front of somebody who doesn't know you, there's this big brick wall up. Huge wall, massive wall. And you got to chip away at that wall a little bit at a time. Right? So the trust doesn't necessarily get built while that wall is being chipped down. Like that's just... You find a commonality. You're, you're you're having multiple meetings, multiple phone calls. You're spending time looking at properties together. And as that goes on, the more and more that you share with them about real estate based information, whether it's 
you know, sharing with them that uh, you're walking through a place and you're, you're letting them know, hey, listen, the grading on this property is not quite what it needs to be. You're likely going to have to deal with this when we get the inspection done. The inspector is going to probably tell you that, you know, educating them on parts of real estate, letting them know that as a first time buyer, there's an RSP opportunity for them. They can put money in and take it out. It's like a forced savings, like educating them, having them understand that you know what you're talking about. That will build the trust right now. Great. You know. This is what we, at the end of the day, what we want to do. We want we want a business that's not only built on new business, but built on referrals. The key that most agents miss out on, that we train on, is asking for the business, right? It's 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 asking your circle, and especially when you've had successes, and especially in the moment of success, ask them for future business. Hey, now that you're happy with what I'm doing, if you know anybody looking to buy or sell, like send them my way. I will take care of them just like I did you. You know, that's canned. That's not necessarily mm -hmm. the way that I'm going to position it. I've actually turned to people and say, bro, now you fucking owe me two, two referrals. Do it. Right. I, I have I have this one former client who's become a friend over the years. He gives me five or six referrals. When I don't hear from him, I'm calling him up and I'm saying, I'm saying, where's the biz, man? Where's the biz? He's like, oh, I'm telling you, Dave, two days later, suddenly somebody's calling me. So this, but this you built you've built that rapport with people, and that's the key. You I, can't I just do that I, to random people. It's gotta yeah, be people you build not. trust with. You've called them, you've talked to them about their vacations, their families. You've done yeah, that for years. Absolutely, exactly. yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And listen, even new business that does come through, you, you know, you when you're done, when you're done the deal and it's closed and they've moved in there, the relationship doesn't end. I like my clients, most of them, almost all of them, high percentage of them. I like my clients, all right? <laughs> yeah. So my relationships continue. I'll tell you, many of my clients have become close friends, right? Which is which is a testament to, hey, this is what you need to do in the industry. Right? You need you need to be able to embrace it. There, I'm an I'm an extrovert if you can't tell. Um not many people, not everybody is. So sometimes it's a little more difficult, right? The relationship ends and they just don't know what to do or say. Well, right. You know what? You know your client just renovated the entire house. Reach out to them. Hey, I'm going to be in the area next week, Thursday, Friday, six o'clock, going to your neighbor's place. I want to pop by. I got a little something for you. I'm dying to see the renovation. Simple. You get there, you walk through the renovation. And when you leave, you remind them, hey, if you know anybody looking for some great condo investments, right now is the time to buy. So send them my way. Right? Would That's you say that that is one of the most effective ways to prospect for new business is to actually build stronger relationships with the people you already know? A absolutely. Look, most realtors across the world work off referrals. If right. people don't yep. love you and don't trust you, they're not going to refer you. And so right. you're not going to be able to get business unless you've built that trust, you've built the relationship. You know, I, it's funny. People in our, in our door knocking training session, I talk to them about why are you knocking on the door? That's the question. I start the training yep. session with that. Why are you knocking on the door? Right. And, you know, some will give me the basics, you know, uh, you know, to tell them about a, a property that's sold in the area. I'm like, but what's what's your goal? What is the goal in here? And they'll say to get the listing. And I said, that's your first mistake. That's your Definitely first mistake. Yep. If you're going yep. in there to get the listing, it's never going to happen. You need you need to go in there to build a relationship. That's, that's the it, bottom man. line. That's that's the bottom get them line. to know you exist. And that's and that's it. Like people, you know, people can tell that. That, that slimy salesperson very, very quickly, right? And you know what? You're going to make mistakes and you're going to yeah. knock on the door and you're going to say the wrong things. Just learn from it, but just keep knocking on the doors. No excuses, no excuses, right? Keep going there, but you go in there to build the relationship because it's going to take time for people to fall in love with you. And that's the bottom line. It, it's so true, man. So would you say, which would you say has more value? And I, I'm going to go down the road and say, I already know your answer here. <laughs> I think you've already shared it with us. Um, an online lead or meeting somebody new through an open house or even a door knock? First of all, face to face. So right off the bat, you know my answer with that. But more so, you know, the online leads, um, you'll never have the opportunity to truly get across what you're trying to get across. These leads come across as just, they're not even lukewarm. They're, they're, they're barely, you know, it's, it's, it's still cold temperature. You're calling them up. They're like wondering, where do you get my number? Why are you calling me? You know, they fill out a form and those are the types of leads that are out there. A person coming to an open house, it's like you going to Costco. Last time you went to Costco, I think I ran into you outside of Costco last time. Was it right? It was uh, Costco or Best Buy or? Be so, okay, use, yeah. be use Best Buy. Like you're going in there with a purpose. 
Yeah. Okay. You're, you're not driving all the way to a Costco unless you're going to actually buy something. These people coming to the open houses, even if they're, even if they're nosy neighbors, which is what we get a lot of, which is yep. fine, but they're coming in there with a purpose. Nosy neighbors are coming in to see what the house is. How does it compare to those? Hey, what a better opportunity to interview for them based on how you react, how you talk to them, the information you provide, your knowledge of the area, your knowledge of the house. You're, 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 you're in an interview and you don't even realize it. So nosy neighbors are one. And then buyers coming in, you know what? They're going to look for a place, whether they're buying now or three months or six months. If you've got the foundation set up, you've got the CRM tight, you put them into it. You're going to have a drip campaign. You're going to be sending them letters. You're going to be doing handwritten cards. You're going to be sending them holiday cards. You're going to go knock on their door. You're going to give them phone calls. You're going to add them to social. Like all these reminders. I can go on and on and on, bro. Yeah. Uh, all of these reminders. You're, you're preaching, man. You're preaching. I love no, it. No, but I, and I know, and I love that about you. And I love that about your program. I love it about your system. Um, you. But all of these reminders, when that person comes into the open house, you will end up with a deal more often than not. So the leads leads for me, they're, they're, it's a waste of time. Personally, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, here's another one we've seen over the years. You know, I want to grow my brand. I I, uh, I want to create something that people are familiar with. And again, we're, we're talking about, you know, building this legacy. What would you tell me to do? What kind of ideas can you suggest? You know, here, do I need to be on the back of a bus to grow? Oh, man. You know, like reality is, is, is you got to start from scratch. So the basics you, you've got to have you got to have like we, i'm going to keep coming back to you, you got to have the crm you got to have the website right up. they got to be able to find you okay because you get that one opportunity like we talked about in the winter where you get that one door that opens and they let you in and you give them your card they're going to google you all right so you got to have the website you got to have the google views at least started or up you got to have google business for yourself already set up you know um a presence is key but the bus by itself is useless Okay. The, the bench, I've got tons of benches. Great. They're useless by themselves. All right. You'll go to many offices, you'll, you know, other offices, they'll sit down in front of the manager and they'll say, I want a prospect. I want to get new business. Manager is going to say, pick a farm area and send out postcards. All right. Mm -hmm. You're five to 600 bucks a month that you're going to be spending by itself is useless. Mm -hmm. All right. All of these individual things, you do them on their own. They're useless. In fairness, if all you're going to do is social media, by itself, it's useless. I can go on. You get the point I'm getting now. You do everything all together. That's going to make the difference. Because if everywhere they turn and they see the open house sign, they see a for sale sign, they see you on the bus, they see you on the bench, they see you on social media, you're, they're getting your postcards in the mail, you're writing them handwritten letters because you knock on the doors. Like all of these things together will keep you top of mind. You're going to get the opportunity. I'm telling you. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. So, so, so are you telling me... That if I'm on social media, if I'm the most popular agent on social media, does it, does it like, no. does it matter how many followers I have? Does it matter about all that stuff? So look again, 20, 30, 40,000 followers haven't done a deal. I'm not, I'm not going to get into this. That's a, whole, that's a, that's a, that's a off, uh, that's an off podcast conversation. <laughs> <laughs> love to have it. There's people with hundreds of thousands of followers that don't do a single deal. So yeah. no, but let's, let's flip it for a second. So yeah. now let's say you did everything properly and you got into, you know, you, you, you're doing everything I just talked about. And now you're inside at a listing presentation with a seller. Okay. And now you're talking about how you're different from other agents. You're talking about how you can bring value to them. Right. And these are all key things that you talk about before you even talk commission, because you got to present the value before you say, Hey, this is what you're going to pay me. So now you turn to them, you're like, I can do this and this and this. And guess what, Mr. Seller? I have a 200,000 person following on Instagram. And what's amazing about that is it's going to get your house in front of way more people than any other agent out there. All right. So there is value to it when it's part of the system by itself. You know, could could a could a $200,000 agent eventually use that and mainly that to, to skyrocket them? Maybe if there's a TV show added to it, possibly. But, um, you know, on its own, it's, it would take a long time. It would be a lot harder. It would be a lot harder. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here, let's let's do this then. Let's, let's boil these down and say overall, you know, the channels that we feel most effective. And maybe, maybe I'll just say it that way and say fill in the blanks. 
you know, I would say, and this is again, something that we're always teaching around the seven ways to communicate with people. You've got the in-person, the phone calls, the text, you got the direct mail, the email, you got social and you got your websites. And as you've been talking about the entire time, and we like to talk about building mind share, it is about leveraging all those different channels to do that. It is about being consistent across those channels. Out of those channels, would it be fair to say that we've 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 come out of that today and said, you know, your in-person channel, your face-to-face -face channel, that phone call channel are probably your top two that you could be leveraging to grow your business in real estate? Yeah, the, the phone call, and, and in fairness, some people don't want the call. So let's use yep. let's use phone call, text message, okay. direct message, instant message, whatever you want to do. That that communication is a great one. The face-to-face -face door knocking is key and very important. All right. We we preach that as part of our world and part of our system. Yeah. Okay. And then social media done right can make a big difference. Because keep in mind, you know, they're they're texting with you over, so they're not really having communication with you over the phone. You know, if you're if you're talking to them, it's gonna be it can be a little bit better, but not everybody likes to talk. Like I said, in person, door knocking, great. They're gonna see you face to face. You have an opportunity, but on social, you know, these video, video content is key. When people can see and hear you speak, you talk about credibility, right? Imagine somebody who has no credibility. You suddenly start talking the talk, knowing, you know, knowing what you're talking about, sounding like you're knowing what you're talking about, even if it's just talking about the interest rate hikes, something simple that most people understand, like having an opinion, like as long as it's educated and, and accurate, that will give you credibility. That's going to yeah. make a difference. So social is key, but done right. Static posts aren't going to do it for you. It's not going to do it for you. Get out there, get people to see you, hear you. Uh, yep. Absolutely. This this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. Hey, yep. I'm at this property. Hey, I'm at this property. Hey, just about to do an inspection. Yeah. Hey, I just sold this place. You know, it's, like you're going to find the best speakers, the best speakers, the best comedians. Let's use that. People that are, are excellent in their field. They do it by telling stories. Yeah. So when you're on social and you're in these videos, tell the story. Tell the story. Right. I, 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 I had one I had one not long ago, a property in uh, in Mill Pond in Richmond Hill, and I was installing the uh, the sign and then I was done. My car was the driveway and a lady came up to me and she's like, what are you doing on the driveway? You don't live here. And she was like acting as security. And I had to I had to say to her, look, I'm the same face on the sign. She goes, no, you're not because I did. It. <laughs> my beard, my beard is not on the sign. So she started arguing with me. So I had to I had to open my phone and show her, hey, look, this is me without the beard. She's like, okay, but you still have to move. I'm like, I'm, I'm moving, but oh like that interaction, you know, that interaction, those stories, they're funny. It's great. And people love it, you know. So here we're talking about, you know, share with people who you are, share with people what you do. Um, we've talked a lot about today again, uh, how to build, you know, and create your legacy in real estate. And you've shared some, some, some amazing stuff, love. Um, in saying that, you know. You also are the uh, managing partner. You are a broker with Forest Hill Legacy. Yeah. Um, I want to take a moment here. You know, how does your brokerage, Forest Hill Legacy, help agents create their legacy in real estate? Because, you know, you got a great head on your shoulders. Again, I know, I know Mikey. I know Steve. Hard workers, smart boys. Uh, you guys have all been, you know, grinding real hard for a long time. I remember when you guys came up with this idea to start this thing, and and yeah. and. It is so wicked to watch a bunch of buddies actually take off and do what you guys have been doing and just watch the successes. And I congratulate all of you guys and, and everybody that's involved in it over there. Um, but I want to just take a moment here. Share with us, you know, the value there. What are you guys doing to help your agents? And, and a lot of what you shared today is obviously what that is. Yeah, look, uh, the difference is the same way that we treat our clients. You know, Mike and Steve, both successful realtors. Um, you know, we do we do a lot of volume. The same approach that we take with our clients it translates into dealing with our agencies. So we're very different in that we're very involved. And ultimately that 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 will make a difference. You know, our, we, we've got a, an incredible community, um, our, our office atmosphere. It's really like family oriented, if you will. Uh, agents are helping them each other out. Agents are not hiding things. Agents are doing showings for each other. Um, it's a very, very tight knit group. We're very selective on who we bring on. Uh, we will not bring on anybody. I, I have no interest in growing to, you know, a thousand agents. I, I like to know every agent's name, mm -hmm. the deals that they're working on, the deals that they just did. I like to congratulate them on the deals that they, we've had agents that have said, you know, that they're surprised we even know their names compared, you know, being at other offices. So us being very involved is key. The, the training. So you see what you get. All right. It's practical. It's real life. This is the reality. But the best part is we do a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. So 
any given day, any given hour, two hours, so whatever you need, we are walking through all of these processes with our agents. You 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 want to role play based on door knocking? Let's do it. You want to do you want to do a podcast together because you don't know how to do it? Let's do it. You want me to show you how to post on Instagram? I'll do it. I'll do whatever you need. Mm-hmm. Their their success is our success. That's the key. And the way we're structured, if they don't make a penny, we don't make a penny. It's very simple. So it's in our best interest when that yeah, phone but, rings at right. one o'clock in the morning, which David it does. By the way, when that phone rings at one in the morning, we're answering it because we know if it's going to make a difference between them getting the deal or not getting the deal, I want them to get the deal. Momentum kicks in. They got another deal and another deal. And that's why our retention rate is at like 98, 99 percent. It's a little Amazing, ridiculous. Right? We, 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 you know, we, we love we love our agents. We're very you know, we've got we've got our, our baseball tournaments that we run. We run a, a three on three basketball tournament in my backyard. We do food trucks. Our holiday party, the spouses are invited to the holiday party. You don't get that at every office. Like little things like that. It's it's it makes everybody want to come in the office and it makes everybody feel at home. So look, the truth is until you're in the moment, you're never gonna realize it. Once you are, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I know uh I know you guys, I know the crew over there, I know what you guys have been building. The growth has been absolutely amazing, but I, I love the fact that it's filtered growth. It is not just let's just take everybody we possibly can. Um, and look firsthand when I'm, you know, around any one of you guys, I can see the, the love and do care that you put into that business, not just your own business, but into your agents. Uh, so there's definitely a, a tremendous amount of value and, you know, you being like me, we shoot from the hip. So we say it straight, we say what it is, but the realities are, you know, on saying that that's, that's where a lot of people get, get the true help. There's no sugarcoating, right? There's no, there's no bullshit. And if you really truly want to grow, you want to be around the right people. Right. Yeah. You've got to have the support, the mentorship, the coaching, yeah. if you will. It's, it's all it's all it all has to be there as part and parcel. And and we love and we love what we do. That's that's when we, when we opened the office. I mean, I, when we opened the office, we were, you know, 900 square feet. The, the, I remember, my, bro. I remember. Yeah, my, dude, we're, we're, we're expanding. We're going to take over the place next door. I'm like, right. All right, let's go. My my physical office that I'm in right now was our former boardroom. And our yeah. approach, our approach was this. If we get no agents. It's okay. We've got this spot, the same expense that we had at our other offices. We'll cover this and we're good. And then it was crazy. We we had uh, we had 35 agents before we even we had 35 agents virtually and half of them working out of Starbucks with me, producing agents by the way, of which of which almost all of them are still with us as a side note, but we had them before we even had a physical address to tie them to, which was incredible. So, good, so look we, 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 we love what we do. We're there to support. We're there to help. But that's that's going to make a difference in somebody's world of business, right? So so, so here, you, you, you've done it all. You, you've, you've gone through your day. You've been productive. You've connected with people. You've built a ton of mind share. Uh, you've obviously supported and, and continued to grow not only yourself, but your, your office, um, the agents within it. You know, you come home at the end of the day. <laughs> it's time to shut it down. How do you know it's been a successful day for you? How do I know it's been a successful day for me? Yeah. Um, I'm coming home happy, Ooh, I like okay, that. which for me is the most important thing. Yep. Uh, I've learned over years to be able to focus on the things that I can control and let go of the things that I can't. So I'm lucky. It's very hard to do. We try training and coaching people on that as well. A successful day for me is, you know, I'm coming home happy. Um, my wife's happy. My girls are happy. Honestly, that's that's all I can ever ask for. The, the, the rest the rest of it is a bunch of bullshit, buddy, in fairness. I love you it. You know, I, I love what I do. I haven't worked a day in my life. That's the way I feel. <laughs> but, but if I'm not happy when I come home or my family's not happy, there's no success in anything. You know, I uh, I continue to ask that question. At the end of every show and every, every, everybody who's tuned in. And first of all, I do want to say thank you to everybody who's tuned in. I don't know if I took an opportunity to say that to you guys today. Um, the Mindshare podcast was actually just rated number eight on iTunes Congrats, this past bro. week. I number eight. Yeah. I mean, just, Amazing. you know, that, that is, it's humbling. Uh, I am grateful. I love the fact that we've built an audience. We've got people that, that believe in the show and tune into the show and amazing guests like yourselves. Um, you know, Lahab, I've asked that question hundreds of times. And 293, a, 293. Dude, there's not a, there's not a soul that uses the word money. When I ask that question, 
Nobody answers with how much money they did today, how many deals they did today. And it's just, it's, it's an amazing thing because as you sit back and you think we're all getting up every day, we want to make more money. We're going to work to make money. You just even said you haven't worked a day in your life because you just love what you do. And I, I tell you very much the same. I love what I do. I love helping people. I love having the platform. I love being able to do this. You know, when you look back on it, you go, well, what was it all about? Well, did I help people today? Am I happy? Do I get to spend time with my family? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. where can people find you, man? Uh, Lahav underscore Resnick. Uh, Instagram is my favorite, to be honest with you. Uh, I am, I'm easily found. That's probably the best way. Lahav, L-A-H-A-V underscore Resnick, R-E-Z or Z-N-I-K. Uh, depending if you're from the States or Canada. So yeah, yeah. Find, find me there, add me. Let's have some fun. Let's chat. Let's do it, man. Tell me, just any, any final words of wisdom you want to share to help everybody get out there, build some mind share to get more money? Um, yeah, you know what? Life is short. Embrace it. Uh, make every day amazing and uh, live it to the fullest. That's, that's uh, if anything, that's what I've got to share, buddy. I love it, bro. Love, awesome. thank you, brother. This has been uh, it's been a fantastic episode. Like I said, shooting from the hip, talking my language, one hundred percent, tons and tons of value today. Uh, I hope everybody tuned in, took a, a whole bunch of notes, and if you didn't, uh, as soon as we're done, go ahead and hit restart and uh, listen to it one more time. Love, thank you, brother. Peace out, brother. Love you. Take care, bro. You are either listening to, this, to one of your, well, you're listening on one of your favorite podcast platforms. Maybe you went to my website, mindshow101.com. Uh, hey, don't forget to leave a review of the podcast at ratethispodcast.com forward slash mindshow101. Again, like I said, we hit number eight on iTunes because of you. Uh, I am so super grateful. You know, we, uh, every so often there's always that, that, uh, as Lahav was just saying with the, you know, the sales cycles, the ups and the downs and, um, especially with podcast ratings, it does the same, you know, sometimes you're in the, in the top 100 and sometimes you're in the top 10. And, uh, the reality is we love what we do. We love having this platform. We love the fact that you continue to tune in. Uh, and we love the fact that we're able to be here, uh, to help you. And so, uh, if again, you were finding the help and you were finding the value, I do ask you, uh, rate this podcast.com forward slash mindshow 101. Take a quick moment right now head on over there um leave us a nice review we love seeing the good stuff we love hearing the feedback uh, i always tell people you know um love hearing the good stuff um the good the bad and the ugly if you or the the bad and the ugly if you got that just email it don't leave that as a review because you know that, that that doesn't do well for us but uh no seriously speaking i thank you sincerely um if we haven't yet connect with me on facebook at mindshare 101 on tiktok at mindshare 101 and of course on Instagram, my favorite platform as well, at David Greenspan 101. Need and want to take a very quick moment right now to say a big thank you to Kids Keep in Touch Systems, REM Magazine, and the ORCF, the Ontario Realtors Care Foundation, for sponsoring this episode. This has been another episode of the Mindshare Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. 